This first reaction setup looks at the combination of two reactants, the identities of which are given in your unknown. When these two reactants are combined, they will form a precipitate. And then, through additional experiments, it can be determined what the identity of the limiting reactant is. In the reaction, exactly 25.0 milliliters of reactant A is combined with 25.0 milliliters of reactant B. The result is a white precipitate that is formed. This precipitate can then be filtered through a piece of filter paper. Over time, the filtrate, which is the clear liquid, passes through the filter paper and keeps the solid contained up top. Different grades of filter paper will allow the filtrate to pass through either more quickly or more slowly depending on the grade. And this will be based or this will determine what size of particle can pass through to the test tube below. In the second step, once sufficient filtrate is collected, we can move on to the second set of reactions. In the second set of reactions, we are taking the filtrate, which contains any unreacted ions, and we will be reacting it with both reactant A and reactant B separately. Initially, when reacting with reactant A, there is no precipitate formation, and the solution is still a clear and colorless liquid. When reacting with reactant B, a white precipitate is formed, indicating a reaction. Based on these observations, you should be able to identify the identity of the limiting reactant that was in the original reaction. The second reaction setup is specifically a reaction between calcium chloride and sodium hydroxide. The concentrations of these two solutions can be found in your unknown file. Exactly 25.0 milliliters of calcium chloride is reacted with 25.0 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. The resulting solution can then be filtered through pil through filter paper. The filtrate, which is the liquid that passes through the filter paper, contains any unreacted ions. All of the reacted ions, including all of the limiting reagent, are contained in the solid, which is trapped in the filter paper. After some time, when enough filtrate is collected to perform the secondary uh, experiments, we can remove the filter paper and look directly at the experiments with the filtrate containing only 
unreacted initial ions. To some of the filtrate, additional calcium chloride is added, and there is no reaction. To another portion of the filtrate, additional sodium hydroxide is added, and additional precipitate is formed. From these observations, you can determine what is the limiting reactant in this experimental setup. And then, using the concentrations given in your unknown file, you can determine the theoretical yield, that is the amount of solid that was, that was formed in the initial reaction, as well as the literal amount or mass of solid that is contained in the reaction, taking into account the solubility of the product.